This is the Optic Studio user interface. So we have a very customizable user interface, uh, which can be broken up uh, with docked windows or with floating windows, like I've just shown here. You can see that floating windows always appear in front of the docked windows. Okay. Um, Optic Studio has a ribbon bar up on top here, which can be um, maximized or hidden, um, just depending on your preference. We also have a system explorer over here on the left hand side, which I have hidden. Um, and this is where you can enter in system specific information like your wavelengths. Now we also have spreadsheets that you use to enter in uh, information about your surfaces or your lenses. Uh, these spreadsheets in Optic Studio are true spreadsheets, which means uh, you can do things like reorganize columns or multi-cell copy-paste. So for example, let's say I wanted to copy this clear semi-diameter onto these preceding surfaces. All right, it all occurs in one quick step. Um, let's see, so we've also removed the modal behavior uh, which had been in some of the previous editions of Optic Studio, um, are, are formerly called ZMAX. So now the surface properties can be accessed at any time, and you can change these settings here, um, here um, without having to click OK and hide them to go on to the next. So it's really easy to use. We've also updated the behavior of some of our analysis windows. So let's take a look at here. We have an RMS versus field plot. So the text tab of these plots um, now has text which can be copy and pasted okay, because this truly is text and not an image of text as it was before. Um, we also have a more efficient way of displaying the data. So Optic Studio um, uses this paradigm of calculate once and display multiple times. So if I display one wavelength, all you see is the analysis re-rendering, but nothing gets recalculated because all of the data has been stored once. Uh, so this information is also stored in the session file, which means that when you open up Optic Studio, uh, the uh, analysis information doesn't need to be recalculated. Let's see, one of the other tools that we uh, significantly updated is the conversion to non-sequential mode. So now we have some automated tools that will lock down your system and get it ready for conversion. You can also generate a ray set that you can use to validate the conversion. And then once the file is converted, you'll see that we have sources which were automatically added in to mimic the field positions from uh, the sequential file, as well as detector rectangles to mimic the sequential analyses uh, that we saw before. All right, and here you can see in the shaded model, we have a large detector to capture the full field, and then smaller detectors positioned uh, just to capture information like the spot diagram that you saw in sequential mode centered around um, these three different field positions. Another area that we have significantly improved is in uh, the programming capabilities. So we've added a whole new set of programming capabilities uh, that we call the ZOS API or ZOSAPI.net. Um, capabilities. And so uh, this is just an extremely efficient way for you to control Optic Studio from other applications. Uh, you also can uh, write your own analyses or user extensions um, or control Optic Studio from uh, MATLAB or Python. Um, this is an extremely efficient way to analyze large arrays of data, uh, which does stand in stark contrast to the um, relatively antiquated uh, DDE capability uh, that we uh, only had before um, and which we do support. 
So let us know if you have any questions about Optic Studio. Uh, you can go right up to the Help tab and email technical support to uh, directly send us an email, or you're welcome to go onto our website and schedule a call with us.